<sighs> Hello. I'm coming back before you again. Um, April the 30th, 2023. And I have a prophetic insight to share. And last uh, video that I um, spoke of about Joseph and uh, King Solomon and King David, I want to kind of piggyback off of Joseph and Elijah, uh, off of Elijah's ministry. And I'm going to start with Elijah first because uh, Elijah is kind of the backdrop for everything I want to talk about. And in 1 Kings uh, verse uh, chapter 19, verse... Uh, <clears throat> Well, chapter 19, we'll start there where it talks about um, jo uh, uh, Elijah running from Jezebel, ended up in the wilderness, um, and how the angels came and fed him, took care of him while he was there in the wilderness. And Father God spoke to him at the mouth of, of the cave and said, why are you here? And with that, uh, Father God gave instructions, go back through the wilderness Back through Dem uh, to Damascus, and I want you to anoint Hazel and Jehu and Elisha in your stead. Uh, from there, Elijah went a separate direction. He did not go back the way Father God told him to. He didn't go back through uh, the wilderness to Damascus. He went another direction and ran into um, Elijah first. Elisha on into 20 uh, uh, chapters 20, 2021, he himself anointed Jehu and uh, Hazel uh, for king and for prophet. Um, he went and anointed them himself instead of Elijah. So Elijah, for one, he ran from Jezebel when he thought his life was threatened, and then he was kind of uh, haughty in spirit when he thought that he was the only prophet left. It goes to show through Elijah's uh, assignment, as, as he went forth, he became arrogant, prideful. Uh, when Father God started revealing all of the power and uh, his glory uh, with signs, wonders, and miracles, um, Elijah became prideful, and um, he presented himself uh, that way. Even with speaking to Elisha, he was kind of arrogant. If you read down there in uh, chapter 19 and 20 of 1 uh, Kings, you can see that there's a little bit of pride there. And then you go over to 2 Kings uh, chapters, what is it, 1 and 2, we pick up uh, was it chapters one and two or does it go a little further back? Uh, I think it goes a little further back where it talks about Elijah saw King, uh, Eli uh, saw King Elijah, excuse me. Elisha saw Elijah taken up in the whirlwind and he had asked before that, if I see you go, I want a double portion of your anointing. And Elijah said, well, if you see me go, maybe you maybe you can have that, but you ask a hard thing. And so when Elijah was taken up into the whirlwind, his, the mantle dropped and Elijah picked the mantle up and his ministry started. Now let's go jump back to Joseph. When I left off, I talked about uh, Father God raising up many Josephs in this hour and he's sending us out to build uh, a kingdom of heaven into the earth, uh, his bringing his bringing his kingdom of heaven into the earth, and how we are to build um, the lifestyle of the kingdom here, and how many uh, uh, prophets, ministers, pastors, um, all of those have went before us, but they did not finish the race strong. Some of them are still in the race, and Father God is sending those back into the wilderness because of pride, haughtiness, and arrogance. Um, and those that have flat just decided that they won't repent, they won't change their ways, he said that he's calling those imposters, and he's removing them from his presence. Now, this was a word that he gave me uh, maybe a month ago about sending uh, many of his leaders back into the wilderness. Um, 
And it was a hard word because I'm thinking, Father God, who wants to go back into the wilderness in, in a, such a, a hard place? Yes, you're taken care of, you're provided for, but you have to go back through these difficult things for, for pruning and grooming and things broken off of, uh, of, of your mind and your spirit. And so it's just a hard place uh, in the wilderness. And many of us can testify to that because we're, a lot of us have come out from the wilderness and we're ready to run our assignments down. So back to Joseph. Joseph, uh, we speak about Joseph and how the ministry that Father God allowed him to cover is a ministry that has, uh, that covers everything as far as being a shepherd of God's sheep. And he has the blueprint to show us how that's done. I talked about King Solomon and how he's another one that has a blueprint to show us what he um, was able to present uh, and, and take Father God's people into a prosperous place that everyone was, was taken care of and all their needs were met. Now, what I want to talk about, Elijah, Elijah, excuse me, not finishing his race strong and caused him to uh, leave uh, the earth before his time, before the, his assignment was up because of it, because he wasn't obedient to finish the race. Elijah took over, and Elijah was one uh, that many of God's people that he's using now, he had a look, he was rough. Um, uh, it said that he was stubby and short, so that means that he didn't have this grand uh uh, look, he didn't have this uh, suit and tie, you know, coming from a good cloth. He was rubby. He came from probably uh, the country, as we would say it today. He came from the country barefoot. So, but this is the type of people the Father God is using now. He is raising up those uh, Elishas, along with a Joseph mentality. This is what he's raising us up to go and become in the earth today. As we build up on the kingdom of God in the earth, that all shall, uh, needs shall be met. We are running uh, as Elisha with a Joseph mentality. This is who God is raising up right now. And so if I'm speaking to you, this, this video is for you. Because Father God is, is shown throughout his word, through many prophets, that the way things will work now in the kingdom of God will not be the same. We would not go in and draw men unto ourselves, but we would draw men unto Father God. No more, no more time for it is I ministry and I presenting and I am in place. It is God's ministry. God designed it and God is building it. He's going to in, uh, orchestrate everything in this season. As we run as, as a Joseph mentality and Elijah uh, as the prophets, we will do the work of the kingdom of God here on earth. And so I just wanted to encourage many of us today that uh, don't count yourself out. Many think, look at you and they, uh, as they looked at Elijah and said, uh, well, you just don't have what it takes. You don't fit the, you don't fit the picture. You're not that suit and tie or that neat appearance woman, but you're rough around the edges. This is who father God is using. I'm a country girl from the country and I know that I'm called and anointed and appointed for this season here. And our assignments are great. We have uh, large assignments before us. And so when Father God says that he is releasing the wealth transfer, we have to receive these uh, giftings, uh, skills, and talents. Uh, be, because we're, Father God is releasing his glory. Signs, wonders, and miracles will follow. So we have to be able to not only be hospitable when we go to a place, uh, to speak or, or draw people to where we are. Uh, hospitable means, uh, what I'm trying to say with that, is that we have a servant's heart. We, we are sent to serve. 
We are not to be looked up on as the leaders today want people to look up on them, to look at their statue, to look at the up, uh, look at their titles and their position and their giftings. We're not running for that. We're running as servants. Uh, when Elijah took up the mantle and he started to run that race, Elijah ran it with power and authority. And he didn't care who uh, said what about him. Um, he was, you, you know, he, he, he just didn't care. He was, uh, built to where, uh, and where he came from, he, he had a hard exterior. So the things that people said about him, just, ru he just brushed it on off. And so many of us, we will have that same hard exterior. We're running a race for father God. It's not about man. It's about drawing all men unto father God. It's about reaching the laws. And turning the hearts of the lost to God, that they shall receive true salvation. And when we talk about the wealth transfer, this is why I say that everyone that really, uh, and I have lost a lot of subscribers because I'm speaking this, but it's not for, the, the wealth transfer will not be for those who think it is for. It is for building the kingdom of God. And it's going to be uh, in different aspects uh, all over. He is reconstructing the financial system as we know it. It is being torn down brick by brick and it will crumble so that he can rebuild it to where to where it is useful for his people. Um, many people don't want to hear that. Uh, I, I, I'm just trying to think of what people thought the wealth transfer was going to be in the first place. Some grand uh, uh, favor of money's just falling all over the place. I, I couldn't wrap my mind around what people honestly thought the wealth transfer was going to be. And the more I just listened to, to uh, bits and pieces of videos, the more I became... Uh, vexed in my spirit. I'm like, Lord, these people are believing anything because that is not the wealth transfer. The wealth transfer is to supply and build the kingdom of God on earth. It is to put us in position to run to the, uh, this end time to draw men unto Father God. That is what it's released for and only for that. This uh, uh, financial crash that's getting ready to happen in so many different aspects is because Father God is wanting to equip the kingdom of God to withstand until he comes. There's so many people that speak in the, the, the uh, excuse me, the ugly side of this thing. Uh, they're speaking all of the, uh, you know, the, the enemy's rising up and he's doing this. No one is speaking the power of Father God and how he's getting ready to present himself in the earth. And all his power and his glory and his splendor. And how he's getting ready to, to come with signs, wonders, and miracles. All of these false uh, miracles that we're seeing, these false gifts, all of that's going to be uh, thrown out. Because Father God is coming on the scene and he's coming strong. We will not be left uh, uh, desolate in these end times. That's not Father God's heart. He's He created the heavens and the earth. When everything that is above and beneath. <clears throat> so why would we think he doesn't have enough power to do what he said he's going to do? How is it that we think that uh, the, the enemy has more power than Father God that, that in the end times that all of these horrific things will happen? Yeah, they're going to happen, but we won't be the ones that be the recipients of it. We won't be receiving all of this um uh, horrific uh, mayhem, those that are sinners and will not uh, uh, seek Father God for themselves are the ones that's going to have to uh, deal with the mayhem. Father God has set up a kingdom for his people that we will be separate from this. As it rains around us, we, it will not come now our tent. That's what the word says. He says, if I be for you, who can be against you? And in uh, Jeremiah 29, 11, he says, um, he has, he knows all things for us, good things for us. He has everything established for us. 
And so I just want to encourage everybody uh, that is running this race. The Father God is called into full-time ministry and you have great assignments before you. You will run uh, with the grace of uh, Joseph and also the anointing of Elisha, double portion, double portion anointing and the grace of Joseph. And so I'm going to close with that until the next video. Be blessed this Sunday evening.